It's quarter past three. <laughs> ben, let's go to Stockholm. <laughs> It's now four o'clock. The taxi has arrived and we go off to Stockholm. This seems to be the most random thing to do, but Ben and I have been given the opportunity of uh, reviewing a rather special room in a hotel. And I'll tell you more about it when we get there. So what's this all about, this midnight flit to Stockholm? Well, you might ask. Ben and I have been given the fantastic opportunity of uh, going to Stockholm as the guests of Visit Sweden and the Mail Online. And we're going to be staying in a very, very special hotel and reviewing it for the Mail Online itself. I can't wait, I'm really excited. Stockholm is, of course, the home of ABBA. Ben and I are both massive ABBA fans. Um, that might give you a little hint as to where it is we're going to be staying tonight. I've actually been to Stockholm once before, and again, it was only overnight. Ben and I are flying out this morning, but we're going to be coming back tomorrow evening. So we've got late morning today and afternoon and evening and all tonight at the special hotel and then we've got first thing tomorrow we fly back sometime tomorrow evening um, we plan to do as many abba pilgrimage things as we possibly can we have been through all sorts of things online and checked all sorts of locations for different abba things or nuggets of fun that we could enjoy and we have quite a full itinerary planned. We're going to be going to the ABBA Museum, of course. I believe we have a special meeting with uh, the museum director, uh, who's going to be greeting us there, which is great. Um, and do you know what? We'll just have to wait and see what transpires. Ben and I are both massive ABBA fans. You know I even have an ABBA tattoo, right? and this view from the windows here is absolutely beautiful. It's very much autumn. The trees have gone golden, golden yellow, if you can see that. It's absolutely gorgeous. Hello, Benjamin. I thought it was Italy that was famous for its breadsticks. What might seem like a dark underground cavern is actually the train station from the airport to get into Stockholm city. about eight or nine years since I was last in Sweden and I've only been here once before and it was to Stockholm and I was only here overnight. I was doing a boomwhacker workshop and if you don't know what that is, boomwhackers are little plastic tubes uh, and you hit them and they go Doop! and they're different pitches and different lengths and I came here overnight just to do a 20 minute workshop for boomwhackers. Couldn't believe my luck because it was the only time I'd ever had an opportunity to do a proper ABBA pilgrimage. Now we're heading down towards the water over here uh, and we're going to be overlooking the Gamla Stand, which is the old town. It's very, very beautiful. And I stayed last time at the Grand Hotel, which is overlooking the vista, which includes Gamla Stand. It's very, very gorgeous. Here is the central station, which is where we've just arrived. 
Um, we seem to have walked for miles and yet we've just come to the front of the central station, which is very odd. I'm really, really excited to be back in Stockholm. It is a very beautiful city. It is one of only two places on earth where I have walked around a corner and seen something so absolutely suddenly beautiful that I've burst into tears. We're about to do that kind of thing again. This fabulously beautiful building here is the Grand Hotel. That's where I stayed last time I was here in Stockholm. And Ben is just walking to one of the most exciting things. There's a very, very famous tracking shot, not tracking shots, panning shot at the end of ABBA's video for Summer Night City. And it's taken from this bridge here. We're just going about to head over there and uh, I'm going to try and replicate that shot because a lot of the buildings are still the same 40 years on. I can't play the music because otherwise that would be a breach of copyright but look there's even a white yacht there. Here it comes. We've got the bridge lining up very nicely with uh, what's a municipal building. I can't really remember what that was there uh, and then it's it's extraordinary to see how little has changed 40 years on. Every tiny little detail is exactly the same, or more so than you'd expect, certainly. And as we come around here, I could not believe my luck. In the original video, look at the parked car, there is a taxi, and pulling up at the same zebra crossing, a taxi. So having seen the beauty that is uh, the gamma stand from the Summer Night City video shot, just look where I am now. This bridge here, I actually going the wrong way. Um, we haven't even been to the hotel yet, it's amazing. Um, what, uh, what you're seeing here is what I should have been seeing had I been coming, walking this way. And this is the, oh gosh, that's so beautiful, isn't it? That is absolutely stunning. Um, this is the bridge over to Djursgarden, which is one of the islands. I'm terrible at pronunciation in Swedish. I don't really know how the, the lettering works, I'm afraid, but this is absolutely beautiful. So over on this island here, which you can see ahead of me, is the uh, the hotel where we're staying tonight, which I still haven't told you what it's all about, um, and the ABBA Museum. <gasps> ABBA Museum! And also, quite touchingly, very close to this rather large and very impressive church building here, is uh, the grave of Stickan Anderson. Stig Anderson, who was uh, Abba's manager and co-lyricist in the early days um, and came up with so many of the great Abba titles that we know and love today, SOS Ring Ring, Waterloo, they're all his titles that he came up with. Um, and we're going to be visiting his grave soon and it's going to be very, very sad. We're going to see quite a lot of this island because tomorrow, tomorrow I am incredibly excited. We've had a uh, confirmation today that the room, <sighs> Kronberg's Atelier, which is a, a studio of an artist called Kronberg, um, is not usually open to the public, but we have had confirmation that tomorrow they're going to, the people at Skansen's, which is a, an area of beauty on this island, not that there's not beauty everywhere you go, but um, Kronberg's Atelier is the studio where the photograph which went on the cover of the Visitor's Album, remember that orange beautiful, oh, okay I'll put a picture up here, um, the beautiful orange picture and that wonderful, see down in the centre that picture of Eros there, we're going to get to go to that room and see that painting tomorrow. We have had the wonderful Begita who has been uh, organising this trip for us has made some magic happen and pulled some strings and has allowed us to have a private viewing into that private room so we're going to get to recreate that album cover as well and Stockholm is one of the most beautiful cities I have ever visited I've said it before I've said it many many times interesting I've only been here once before but I feel very much like uh, I feel it's very familiar, I feel, um, not just from watching the videos, but I feel very familiar and I feel like I recognise it and I feel like I'm at home here. Um, it's very interesting, I don't feel like this in many, many cities around the world when I don't have uh, a particular connection with them. Stockholm has given me its own connection, I think. It's not a church at all. It's the Nordiska Museet, which is some kind of um, Norse museum, I guess, but uh, oh, it's a very, very attractive, very beautiful building. Look at 
that. Isn't it gorgeous? Sorry if it's giving me a bit of vertigo, but it's really, everything 360 is so beautiful around here. I really, really can't get enough of the beautiful stock there. Everything about this place is stunningly beautiful. I, I cannot wait to just, the trees are the most amazing colors. It's almost like the first time I went to Rhinebeck in the autumn as well. Um, and I saw all the beautiful colors that uh, North America has to offer. Well, this to me feels very, very similar. We're now gonna go through into, it begins with V. I'm not even attempt it because I'll offend people. Ben and I are now standing in the Kirkogarten, which is the cemetery, the church garden, and it is, you can hear the sound of some construction work, but it is one of the most peaceful and beautiful places. The, the trees, the colors, everything about it. It's, gosh, I can think of many, many worse places to have as my final resting place. There's a beautiful bell tower there. See mausoleum behind me here. It's uh, it, it's unlike any place I've ever been. I think it's partly to do with the, the trees. Everything is so beautiful and so still and so well cared for. See, there's leaves on the ground. It's autumn, but I think that adds to the adds to the ambiance really. We don't quite know where Stig's grave is. I hope we do find it. We're on a bit of a pilgrimage here, and it'd be nice to pay our respects to the great man. This clip might appear that I am going up to Stig's grave from what I've just said. I'm not, but I couldn't resist including it because of the colour of the leaves as I just get to the top of these steps here. Just see this. Golden carpet. This is Stig Anderson's grave. You can see the little cleft there. Stig Anderson's family grave, and here's Stig with his dates and his wife Gudrun, who survived him by some years. It feels it feels really oddly very moving to be here. We found a photograph of the grave, and we tracked it down by the unusual shape. We came at it from the back. Um, this is a man who is responsible for managing, co-creating ABBA and, and was such a friend to the ABBA members and is responsible for so much of the, the music of my childhood. It's incredibly moving. I mean, his, ben and I are both super fans of ABBA's music and this man is, is, is partially responsible for it and it feels it's an incredible honour, actually, to be here. Um, it's very moving, as you can tell, because there's such a connection to my childhood. And one of the things I've always loved about my shared love of the music of ABBA with my husband is that it sort of connects our childhood at a time when we didn't know each other. This is a very special moment, and um, I'm very pleased we found this. Thank you, Stig. Thank you for the music. I have absolutely no doubt that the phrase thank you for the music is something that gets said to the various members of ABBA many times a day, not by people making puns either, but by people who genuinely mean it. I know I do. I don't know about you. But I really, really, really want this to be my holiday home. I would love to live in that little pixie house. Nearly there. Maybe you've guessed our destination already. So we are getting close to our hotel now. We still haven't even checked in. It's only two in the afternoon. We've been up a very, very long time. I think we're both a bit, uh, a bit sleepy, but enjoying the beauty that Stockholm has to offer far too much. 
to want to rest. I suppose it would be a good idea now to tell you which hotel we're staying in. We, <laughs> this is so brilliant, we are so lucky. We're going to be staying at the Pop House Hotel. <laughs> this is so brilliant. We have had the Abba Gold themed room reserved for us and that is the room that we have to uh, review. I am so excited. I have no idea what to expect. I've deliberately not looked at any pictures online, but we've just arrived here at the Abba Museum. And if I turn this round, this is what's come to greet us here. Look at that. Here we are. This is the Abba Museum and the Pop House Hotel is in this complex. I think it's just around the back. So we are going to go and check in while I leave my idols and heroes singing forever. So here we are in the Abba Gold Room. This is amazing. We are surrounded by... I can only assume these are the real gold discs. They are presented to, look at this one, three million sales. This one here, presented to Björn Ulvaeus uh, to recognise sales in the United Kingdom of more than three million copies of the Polydor Records album Abba Gold. What's this one? Presented to Annefried Lindstadt to commemorate RIA certified sales of more than six million copies. Uh, this one here is to Benny, which is six million copies. There's this 20 million over there. Yeah, I mean, Goodness, there's on the wall here, I'll show you those in a minute, there are four great big, they're gold discs of how, how many are in each frame? Well, I assume there's, there's a disc there's, for every million. There's, there's, there's a disc for, ev for every single million, and there are four frames, so there's, 20, there's 80 discs over there, one set of 20 for each of the uh, members of ABBA. We have just arrived at the hotel. Uh, the hotel is in the ABBA Museum, so you walk into the main... Uh, area, the main foyer, and <laughs> that's my light. Uh, you walk into the main foyer area and you've got tickets for the museum and tickets for the hotel sort of next to each other. We checked in, we went straight to the gift shop, didn't we? Straight there. They were playing ABBA songs and one of the things that we wanted to get was this. What's the lady's name, Ben? Uh, yeah, yeah. Was it Sarah Russell? Sarah Russell, who's Signed put together well. the ABBA Guide to Stockholm. And this is, uh, this is brilliant because what we're, we're here on a bit of a pilgrimage. So we're planning to find as many of the ABBA locations from photographs as possible. And she's got all the, the, the know-how of how to get where you want to be, which is just brilliant for us. Um, we are going to be going tomorrow to the place, hopefully, on the park bench where uh, they shot the the album cover for the greatest hits and it was also uh, and also for the first single cover shoot which was people need love back in 1972 73 yeah i'll show you that um so that's going to be very very exciting that's yeah, the one thing very ben, excited about ben like hoofed it off into there straight away while i was queuing up but then he went come on in there's lots of stuff we want to play with. and how much stuff did we buy we haven't even been to the museum yet, and we, we hadn't even checked in, but we bought uh, a fridge magnet. Um, it was like the Generation game. We bought okay. one of those things that you... Oh, a little musical box yeah. for money, 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 a uh, cuddly toy. <laughs> no, we didn't. But we postcard. did get a, a postcard and a wooden horse. A wooden horse? Dala, Dala. Dala horse. Dala horse. So An ABBA Dala horse. Ben's mum wanted one of those, but we've got the ABBA themed one, because she's also a big ABBA fan, and it's got it's black and it's got gold, so uh, just like this room. The whole room, I'll give you a guided tour later. When we arrived to check in, we were handed this bag. And I said to the lady, very nice lady behind the counter, I said, "Do does everybody get this when they check in or are we special? And she said, no, this was given in earlier today, ready for your arrival. So Birgitta, who has been so brilliantly helpful in putting all this together from Visit Sweden, um, she has given us, and I Ben had a little look inside, but I haven't yet. Oh, there's a second bag, which is nice, we've got one each. Uh, the bag is, what does it say here? Stockholm, the capital of Scandinavia. I wonder how other cities feel about that. <laughs> So, uh, what's in here? Oh, look at this. Happy plugs. Oh, look at that. Don't stop the music. Stockholm is one of the world's leading music cities. Yes, it is. And we've got some uh, headphones. A pair of gold ones and a pair of silver ones. Oh, are really? Which are which? Well, for gold. Oh, oh, actually, they are gold. Sorry. They're amazing. and They are actually gold as well. Actual real gold, yeah. yeah. Real gold. You bite them. Ah. Yeah. Um, what I love about, look at the way they're presented as well. The earplugs are quavers. 
and I don't mean cheesy crisps. <laughs> That's very kind. How lovely. Um, deluxe edition, designed in Sweden. Headphones, mic, and remote. Oh, cool. Ooh, chocolate. Chocolate. Tales of Stockholm, Gamlestan. And I happen to know Gamlestan means old town. It's the name of one of the islands here in Stockholm. Um, for those of you who don't know, Stockholm is, a, is the city centre. It's a collection of islands all linked by waterways and bridges. It's beautiful. Tales of Stockholm, Gamlestan. So that's the old town. 85% cocoa and wood smoke. Mm, what does yours say? Mine says uh, Tales of Stockholm. Go on, give it a go. Djurgården. I think it's... I think it's <laughs> Uh, Jurgarden, I think, which is the island we're on now, which is where the Pop House Hotel is and the Abbey Museum as well. And, what and is it's 70% cocoa plus Lingen Blush. I don't know what that is. We'll probably What's find Lingen? that. Lingen Blush will be, a, it'll be a flower. Or something. Let's get it in my mouth. Are we going to try it out? Well, why not? Let's have some each. We are here to review, after all. Oh, let's got, review the chocolate. It's got a smell to it. Was it? There's not, oh, it's oh, it's a map of oh, the city. Oh, look, that's on brilliant. Oh, that's amazing. So, <laughs> so if you can see here, uh, make sure I've got this the right way up. Yes, I have. Um, so, this is the collection of islands, and actually, we are, we are just. Uh, we're not on that one, are we? Yeah, we are. We're, we are just here. <laughs> this is where we are on Jurgarden. Hello. And uh, this one's the same, sadly. They are the same. Oh, that's nice. That's great. So uh, we can see exactly where we are. This is uh, where we are. And we walked. The, the train station is here where we arrived. This is the train station. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm giving you a guided tour of Stockholm via chocolate. Hysterical. So this is the train station. Oh, thank cool. you. Which one is it? Mm. Oh, that one. Mm. Love it. Mm. Oh. Um, and this is the... This oh, is that will suck the moisture out of This is Gamestan. Gamestan there. We're going to go there later on. Down here is Hotel Rival, which is where um, the... Gosh, that's very oh, dark. It's making me salivate. It's really <laughs> lovely, and I'm going to be drooling all over the table. Because it's oh, really, really nice. all the moisture out of It's mind. nice. And we walked from here... All the way um, to round to here. This bridge here is where I filmed the uh, Summer Night City oh. uh, road roundabout. Um, what's it called? Shot. And then we walked up to here. We went to visit the uh, the synagogue. Um, and sadly, we couldn't go inside. But this little harbour area that you can see just there is one of the most beautiful areas in Sweden. It's one of the when I first came here about eight years ago, I rounded the corner saw this harbour and it was just so beautiful, I burst into tears, ridiculous. And then we walked all the way around here and down to where we are now. All done by the chocolate. It's just as well I managed to get that Ooh, done. Oh, this one's got a very fruity. Ben's going to eat it. Which one is this? I can't tell the difference anymore. This will be the Linden... Oh, well, in fairness, that's this will be the Linden Blush. This will be yeah. the Linden Blush. That was wood smoke flavour. Mm. No yeah. wonder it's yeah. sucked all the moisture from that's my mouth. That's gorgeous. Um, <laughs> Get rid of these things away. Mmm, it's absolutely delicious. That's um, one's really nice, actually. Do you prefer the second one? Yeah, because the first one, literally, you'd need a couple well, of tea. I really like the first one, so should we just have those each? Mm. And you can have that one. I'd have it with a nice cup of tea. Yeah, but I want this one without a cup of tea, and you like that one on its own, so. I'll read this book. Done. <laughs> What's a very, very lovely, lovely. Uh, oh, there's something else in here. Ooh. What is this? Hey, we are happy to welcome you to Stockholm. Enjoy your visit and keep in touch. The Visit Stockholm team. Find your way quickly to professionals. Uh, so we there's, oh gosh, Nathan Taylor. This is very exciting. We are walking around uh, having the most wonderful time and Stockholm is incredibly beautiful. Uh, ooh, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Welcome to Stockholm, the open city. Mm. Stockholm for professionals, so we've got um, fashion technology. We've got Stockholm Pass, 40 hours, which gives you free entry to most of the museums and attractions. Yay! Gosh, let's get out of here and let's go get looking. I think that's going to be tomorrow, isn't it? We're going to be getting, making much use of that. That's like lovely. we're going to go to a museum. I oh. want to go I want to go to the big one that we passed away here. This is the, um, the underground network that's... Oh, maybe. Oh, gosh, there's so much cave. to do. Um, so, visit Stockholm. Uh, we've included your Stockholm Pass, valid for 48 hours, which gives you free entry to most of the museums and attractions, as well as sightseeing tours by bus and boat. Wow. 
Oh, we might do a boat tour tomorrow. That'd be lovely. We haven't the time. I've also included your public transport ticket, mm. which gives you unlimited travel with bus, metro, computer, train, and the local ferries. Oh, that's very good. Thank you, Visit Stockholm. Thank you. I didn't expect any of this. This has been really, really wonderful. Um, if you need a taxi, blah, 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 when you're on social media, please, during your stay, please use Visit Stockholm. We absolutely will. Um, and for further information. Uh, so that's the Nobel so, Prize Museum. This is, this, so this is from Birgitta. So Birgitta is the person who's put this whole trip together for us, and she's been absolutely wonderful. Um, what, so this is, what's that? Oh, that's Birgitta's personal details on her business card. I'm not going to show you that. Uh, and here's the pass. And look, there's two of them. Oh, that's really, really kind. That's really kind because, uh, in all fairness, this is we we I say we are the special guests of visits with here. Stockholm. That's actually uh, because I'm the one doing the review. Although oddly, it was organised by Ted Thornhill, who is Ben's old music school friend. Um, so Ben is here as my guest because I'm here as uh, Visit Sweden's guest. And visit Stockholm. So I didn't expect there to be two passes for that, unless there's going to be a bill. Yes, it will be that. I don't know. Um, do you want to go to the Tom Tits experiment? I do want to go to the Tom Tits experiment. What on earth is it? Tom... <laughs> then you're such a child. You you're mean? such a child. Do you mind? Get it out. Let me, let me read it. Let me Tom read it. Tits. Um, Tom Tits experiment is Tom Tits experiment is the oh. biggest science centre in Sweden to attract and attract young and old. Discover and learn more about science and technology through over our 450 experiments. The park is open from May to September. Oh, we can't. <laughs> it's October. <laughs> How lovely. What else is what's it, what's in here? The world's longest art exhibition. Longest? Gosh. It's open now. We can go see this one as well. Do you know what? There's so much to do in Stockholm. I even just wandering around without do you know, if we weren't going to see <gasps> robots. The Museum of Spirits. Ah, oh, and I'm looking at robots, science and technology, and <laughs> you need to come But back. it doesn't say anything about the Museum of Spirits. Alcohol. Oh, art. it's alcohol. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, uh, Ben thought it was sort of like Wiccan thing. No, it's spirits, as in rum and brandy. Oh, I'm Not terribly thing. disappointed. I don't drink at all, and Ben hardly oh. ever does. Um, um, Museum of Performing Arts. Weren't we there today, having a cup of tea? Yes, we were. Oh. Uh, Saint Const Museet. Yeah. Yes, we were. Um, and Skansen we're going to tomorrow, and that's where... So Skansen is where the Visitors album cover was shot in the uh, Kronzberg Atelier. And we're going to go there. I think I've already said that already. Sorry if that's repeating myself. Yes, we said. are. I'm so excited. Ben, that was the one thing Ben wanted to do while we were here. And uh, Birgitta has made it possible, which is the most exciting thing ever. When uh, Ben was badgering me as soon as we got off the plane, he said... Um, can you make sure, can you just check, have you got uh, have you had a response from Brigitte to see if she's been able to sort out? So Ben, I'll, I'll check soon, we've just arrived, and I wanted to wander around. And then we sat down for a little bite to eat at lunch, and he said again, can you uh, just check? And I, I did. And the email said, um, hello, this is Stockholm calling again, and uh, Skansons have agreed to open up the Kronzberg, Kron, Kronberg, sorry, the Skansons have agreed to open up Kronberg's Atelier at midday for you tomorrow. It's very, very, very exciting. So that's a special, special um, by appointment only visit that we're going to get, and we're going to actually sit in front of the picture, which looks like talk amongst yourselves. I've got a copy of the single for one of us. Oh, I've beaten you to it. There you go. Show, tell, tell, tell the camera and tell the good folks at home exactly what it is about that that's so special for you. So when I was uh, seven, I think, I bought, well, I was a massive ABBA fan all my life, and I bought um, The Visitors when it came out uh, in 1981. And it was a very beautiful um, album cover, which used to make me quite scared. It was also um, used on one of us, and I have the single here, if you're not familiar with it. And the the, 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 the angel in the background, that's actually Eros. And, uh, and there's a song on the album called Like an Angel Passing Through My Room. And I used to think that that was the angel from Like an Angel Passing Through My Room. And it used to make me very um, scared, but uh, there's a kind of a, there's coldness to the picture. It was, it was when 
ABBA were breaking up and everything was bad. And the relationships between the the, the, uh, the singers had already broken up. You know, the, the marriages were over. And if you look at what you know, the four of them, they're all looking in different directions. They're all sitting there alone. Um, and it's it's sort of a bleak time for any ABBA fans, mm. but it's also but, it's, but yet it's such warm, rich colours. It's such a beautiful image. And we're gonna get to sit yeah. there tomorrow. And I used to sit there and I'd look at this picture and I'd get lost in it because there's so much detail on it. There's all these amazing pictures on the walls. And about ten years ago, or maybe even more, I I won an award in uh, Romania. And I met the daughter of the man who'd taken the photograph. And, uh, and she said, oh, it's really interesting. That lamp in the photograph by Agneta, that, um, that was our lamp from home. And, uh, and he used to, uh, and, and he took that from home to dress the, to dress the room. Um, and so even then I was kind of obsessed with the <laughs> idea of seeing it. Um, I, I can't guarantee the lamp will be there. No, the your, lamp your won't friend be there. will have it back in her no, we'll family house. Covered in sure. dust sheets and, and all sorts. And but, uh, but yeah, picture I used is to, huge. I mean, it, it is looks, absolutely enormous. Benny is standing up, and it goes off the top of the shot. So that's that's going to be sort of thirty feet high, I should think. But I used to I stand know. there. I used to sit there in in, in my home on the sofa. Um, I can still smell the the the, uh, the words were written on an inner sleeve and the on the album, and I used to um, smell it. It smelled of glue, I suppose, or, or or something like that. It had a very very specific smell, which uh, reminds me of the songs. And the songs are all quite dark on the album as well, aren't they? I've got a vinyl version of the Visitors album. I wonder if because uh, you know they didn't see the light of day very often. I wonder if you were to go home and smell that, whether it would take you back to the same place, whether it would smell the same as yours. It might well, it may well, I, I have no idea. I'm sure it was to do with the manufacture of it. Yeah. Um, but it was all wrapped up for me in this kind of dark, um, brooding, slightly sad um, image that I had of, 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 of the band and the album. Uh, so to go to that very location is going to be incredibly exciting. As I said, when we were at Stig's grave site, um, genuinely, the music of ABBA has been incredibly important to both of us, hasn't it? Um, Absolutely. And it's formed our appreciation of pop music, it's formed a lot of your appreciation of harmony and musical structure for some of the, the, the songs that you write. You've, um, you have deliberately used ABBA motifs as some reference points in some of your recordings. Mm -hmm. I even uh sang the winner takes it all i even sang that phrase in my vows to this man when we got married um i sort of crafted it into the song that i had written about my vows to my husband and yet it was so important to me that i wanted to reference that so that's that gives you some sort of level and i even have an abba tattoo look there's my back-to-back -back bees which are from the, I've got a hand on it, the ABBA logo right there. So it is it is definitely a pilgrimage to be here. Um, I reckon we should probably, I should probably show them around the room, don't you? Yeah, right. do it. Uh, I'm reading this book. <laughs> I'll leave you to And I've got chocolate. You've got chocolate and I'm gonna take mine. Yep. This is your view that you walk in straight into where Ben is eating chocolate and reading the book, as he said. But look at the table we were just filming on. This is an ABBA gold CD um, with all <laughs> with chocolate everywhere. But there you go. That's pretty cool. Um, these are the discs that we were talking about earlier. And on the wall here is a huge rendition of the ABBA gold uh, uh, album cover. And to give you an idea of just how huge that is, here I am, in it, with it. It is absolutely enormous. Uh, moving around from here, I could just show you the view, actually. We've got this enormous balcony. Um, so if we, had, if we had come here to stay for a week in the summer one time, it would be absolutely beautiful. There's this gorgeous-looking theme park, which is very reminiscent of, do you know the, the, the film Big with Tom Hanks? 
And he turns into a, he's a young boy that turns into a grown man and has to live as a young man with a young boy's body, a young boy's mind and his body. It's very odd. Um, but uh, very reminiscent of that. Then we've got, look, this is, it's all black and gold, which is ABBA, not Sam Smith. No, what was it? Sam Sparrow, wasn't it? Sam Sparrow. Yeah, black and gold. gold. And we've got uh, iron and ordinary things here. This is very lovely. I love how this shimmers in the light here. I've actually got, I've got these, these, um, wooden things at home, but they're not gold like that. I'm almost tempted to paint them. I kind of prefer these, Ben, what do you think? I could paint one side of the ones I've got at home, spray yeah, them yeah. gold and, and stick some things on it. I was gutted when we walked in, I was devastated. Someone put the bees upside down and the bulgy bits were at the top. Very, very wrong. Here's the wall I was talking about just now with 20 gold albums for each member of ABBA. We've got Bjorn's here, and Yetta's here, there she is. Benny's just here, and these for Annie Free, Linkstad Royce. Uh, 20 for each of them commemorating, look at this. Presented to Benny Anderson to commemorate sales of more than 20 million copies worldwide of the Polar International Universal Music Album, Ava Gold. That's the sound of Ben eating my chocolates, I think. No. Coming through into the bedroom. Look at this, very nice. Gold pillows, black and gold, of course. And uh, the Tivoli um, uh, theme park. Not open at the moment, I don't think. I don't know if it's off-season, whether it will be at all, but I, I really rather like it. I think this room is very much fun, and uh, I love the lighting. They have three ABBA-esque themed rooms here at the at the Pop Hotel, Pop House Hotel. Um, one of them is this one, the ABBA Gold Room. Another is uh, themed for Mamma Mia, so that's all sort of Greek Taverna style, but not really ABBA. Um, uh, of course, it's, it's the music of ABBA, but you know it, the theming is is around the movie rather than the music. And the uh, the third one is themed around uh, Christina Fronduvemola, which is the musical that Benny and Bjorn wrote uh, after Chess in the early nineties, in ninety three, I think. Um, so I think we did well with this one. This one is it feels kind of classy and kind of. Uh, <sighs> Chic, because of the black and gold, I think. It's very, very sort of... Do you think it's chic, Ben? Chic? Or yeah. Chic. <laughs> chic? Chic. Chic, yeah. Yeah, it manages to be chic and fun. It, it has its tongue very much firmly planted in its cheek. In its cheek. <laughs> chic, chic. And uh, I I love it. I just love the wall of... Um, what are they called? The gold discs. I think they're fabulous. I'm lost for words. That never happens. I'm just jumping in here to uh, kind of fill in some of the gaps. I realise now that I'm home, I realise that uh, as things got more and more exciting as the trip went on, I started filming less and less and that was remiss of me. Uh, I've got lots and lots of bits of footage but nothing really explaining what it's all about. So the next little section of this film is going to be a little montage of all of the locations and the recreations that we did. So we went around the city trying to find as many uh, spots where famous photographs were taken uh, by the, the members of ABBA, either together or in, in videos. You've already seen the little bit uh, of the video of, of the Gamma stand from Sunlight City, but we, we, we did so much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> we had much, much fun. If you've ever seen the uh, the Greatest Hits album cover, you'll know the uh, the famous park bench. Now, the park bench is uh, a very, very iconic photograph. It features all four members of ABBA sitting on a tree, which has a very specific lean in a certain direction. And we were able to find that. And what you're looking at now, if I get out of the way, what you're looking at now is us putting together... <laughs> a montage photograph so that we could recreate it. Obviously there's only two of us, but there are four members of ABBA. Naturally, everybody knows this, Nathan, shut up, I know. Um, but we had so much fun doing it. I I enjoyed the, the challenge of trying to get everyone lined up in the right places. And trying to make sure that we, 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 we had the original to look at and we were moving ourselves on the bench in all the right places. I enjoyed it so much, I then thought, wouldn't it be a really fun challenge if I tried to do it with all four positions filled by me? Now, of course, let me get, go on, let me get out of the way for this one and show you, this is what the original looks like. 
and uh, you can see that Benny and Frida over on this side are <sighs> snoggy. How's I going to do that? <laughs> it turns out with great difficulty. <laughs> but I did my very best and I'm actually not too displeased with the results. What do you think? <laughs> Here, of course, is the original and here's our version. I'm really stupidly pleased with it. I'll go on then, since you are so nicely. Here's the version with just me. It's the most narcissistic thing in the world, isn't it? I'm even kissing myself. Ugh. Anyway, back to Stockholm. Ben and I are currently walking up Bagansgata towards number 21, which is where Benny and Frida had an apartment back in the 70s. How cool is that? We have to be very respectful because it's obviously not owned by anyone who has any connections to Abba anymore. And here we are. This is 21 Bagansgata. And uh, they had a top two floor maisonette up at the top there. And the beautiful thing is, I'll show you a photograph later on from the book. You can see inside their flat and you can see the eaves. It's very easy to see that that's the, uh, the shape of the roof up there. It feels kind of weird knowing that two of our biggest heroes, me, Benny, Ben Frieda, lived right here for some time, I believe. Apparently it's very expensive. I've been saying to Ben ever since we got here that I have this strange affinity with Stockholm and I have just managed to unerringly walk us to this, which is uh, Hotel Rivel, um, which is part owned by Benny Anderson from ABBA fame, of course. Uh, I've been here once before, it was nine years ago. It's a completely different part of town from where uh, we've been spending the rest of the day and I've just walked us here across a bridge and down... Uh, I don't quite know how I've done it, it's a little bit spooky. I love it because the, uh, the marquee of this hotel looks very much like a theatre, which I find very, very appealing, of course. And uh, inside, there's a particular wall which has a very specific uh, artwork on it, which is all about the branding of the hotel. Um, and I loved it so much before. It's been my wallpaper on my MacBook ever since. It's been several computers since, but it's still there. It's my desktop wallpaper, but it's a very bad quality version of the photograph, and I'm going to take another one with this much better quality phone. We've also just been to a lovely shop, and I've got some very nice yarn here, which I'll talk about more later on, on my podcast. Interestingly, they've painted over the artwork, and it's all black and gold to represent Abba Gold. Obviously, it's just like being in the Abba Gold room at the Pop House Hotel. Um, it's not what I thought, but I will still take the picture. Really? We are heading back now to the hotel. We have had the most amazing time. We've walked for miles and miles and miles. Our feet are very, very sore. And just look. Just look at... <laughs> Stockholm doesn't know how not to put on a show. It really, really doesn't. This is quite, quite extraordinary. I can't quite believe the colours that I'm part of, the fact that I can still be seen in this light. It is absolutely stunning and it goes on and on and on, all the way down this fabulous boulevard. Just beautiful. Okay, we've just arrived in... <sighs> We're at the other end of your gardens the island. I'm really bad. I don't know. I can't I never remember what it's called. But we've just arrived here and we're on a pilgrimage for uh, to see a, um, a rain shelter uh, with benches on it, which was a scene of several of the single covers for some of Abba's uh, records. Um, well, their first one ever. But just look. Look at how beautiful this is. The colours here are extraordinary. Um, we've sort of got a beautiful little church up there. But if we just take you on a, on a little guided tour all the way around, so I just swing you around and, and, and make you feel a little bit seasick. But it's just everywhere you look, the colours are magnificently beautiful. This is so gorgeous. I'm going to take you on a little journey this way. And if you, if you follow me, then we can get across this bridge. 
this is what uh, this is where we're heading now we're heading over to this other side and hopefully the uh, the rain shelter which will become very uh, very visible soon will be just around the corner and hopefully you recognize it but I've got a single in my bag which has the uh, has the photograph on it so hopefully we can recreate the photograph which is there Um, the colour of that golden tree is outrageous. But then I swing round and I see this tree as well. I mean, it is, it could not be more beautiful if it tried. Let's have a look around and see the other side. We're trying to avoid all the traffic. Let's see the other side of the river, which is coming up. Oh, I've just, <laughs> I've never ever seen such gold. I mean, I've, I've seen trees being colours before, but this is absolutely magnificent. Look at that. I know. I've just seen it. You can't, probably can't sit there nestling through the trees. That's, that's the range shelter that we're heading for. Come with me. <laughs> And there it is, peeking through the trees. Ben walking towards it. You can probably just hear the crunching of the gravel more than you can. Oh, wow, that's so familiar to me. I know you can't see much of it in the shot just yet, but I really can. It looks like someone's had a bonfire in front of it, um, but it's hopefully not in bad condition. But what an extraordinary thing to have. Kind of in the middle of absolutely nowhere is probably exactly where you do want to have a rain shelter, not a bus stop or anything like that. Look at that! So this is the picture. This is the single People Need Love, Bjorn, Benny, Agneta and Anifried before they were even called ABBA. And if you can see, I'm gonna take this away, you'll even see where the trees are in the background. Uh, can you see the two trees there? That's exactly where they were sitting. Well, of course, there was absolutely no way after the park bench escapade that I was going to be able to go anywhere near the rain shelter without wanting to recreate the picture that was on the front of that single. <laughs> so, oh, hang on. Here it comes. So I uh, did what I could. I'm not going to guarantee it's very well done because we couldn't find the right place with the camera and I haven't done it yet so at the time of filming this I haven't seen the finished results so yeah, it is what it is I think uh, me being Agneta is going to be far too large in the foreground well, well let's just see okay let's let's uh, okay, enough of that and let's try and see what the finished result looks like I don't know what do you reckon <laughs> it's probably about as good as that's going to get. <laughs> it's a lot of fun though, I have to say. There it is. That is the scene of the crime. I've just done my absolute best to try and uh, be all four, people, all four people in all four positions. So now I've got to head back because we are going to Scansons. We're in a bit of a hurry. This is a bit of a detour, but we're going to Scansons now to see Konsberg's Atelier, the, sign, the scene of the photograph on the front of the visitor's album. Another example of how Stockholm does not know how not to be absolutely beautiful. We're just walking now back from the rain shelter to some blue sky ahead, which is lovely. Um, and then just look at the colours of these trees. It's incredibly beautiful. Oh, it's like a magical fairy tale kingdom, isn't it? We're in a little bit of a rush now because we're trying to get to Scansons as quickly as we can. But the, the sun is coming out and everything around us is bathed in beautiful golden light. It is just like, it's just like walking through a fairy tale. I can't, I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying, I'm just trying to change it like that, how much I'm enjoying what Stockholm has to offer at the moment. At the end of our very 
sweaty walk. We were getting quite a shift on at that point because we desperately did not want to be late for what was happening next. We were going to meet uh, Caroline, who's one of the head members of staff. I don't, I don't actually know what Caroline's uh, position was, which is very high up at Skansen. I was calling it Skansen's. It's not. It's uh, Skansen, or probably, uh, I, or rather, Skansen. Um, which means fortress in Swedish, and it's the largest and oldest, I believe, it's only the oldest, it might also be the largest, outdoor museum in the world. Uh, it's 1890, I think it dates back to, and it's a collection of buildings. I've just had a pot noodle, sorry. It's a collection of buildings that the founder um, has collected from all over Sweden, from different uh, eras of uh, Swedish architecture, architectural history. And it's fascinating. So what, what he's done, he's gone around the country and said, that's a very interesting building, I don't have one of them, and uh, buys it, dismantles it, um, timber by timber, and rebuilds it in this little outcrop of rock in the middle of, uh, of the Jurgården. Um, which is the island that I keep mispronouncing in, in there so badly. I'm just pointing over there. My laptop's over there. Idiot. It's not in there at all. It's over in Sweden, wherever that is, wherever direction that is from here. One nutbag. Um, it was uh, an appointment we did not want to miss. Caroline was the lady who was going to let us into Kronberg's atelier, which I was calling Kronsberg. I... I, I Forgive him, he no know what he did. Um, Kronberg is a very fine Swedish painter and, well, just look. The sun was shining, it was an absolutely beautiful day as we approached the atelier from the outside. It is a gorgeous building, it's wonderful to see it. We went up the rickety staircase and there we were, faced with the scene of the visitor's album cover photograph. We walked in and we were we had the same hushed awe that people having deeply religious experience experience at Notre Dame or Sacre Coeur or, or one of those that's terribly Christian version, of course. Um, uh, whatever your whatever your most spiritual uh, reference might be, it, it kind of felt like that. That's not to diminish anything or to trivialise anything at all, but it really did genuinely feel like something very, very special. I too have, not probably not to the same extent that Ben has, but spent many, many hours looking at these wonderful photographs. The first thing you see is the photograph of Eros. It just comes in and it's magnificent it's huge and you can see there at the top the gold wings of eros they are hugely uh vibrant and even though the light in there it always feels very sort of dark and cold it wasn't it's this wonderful white pure light one must be wonderful for painting and although i know that's not the location it was but the windows were so extraordinary but that's the statue of the not statue of the painting of Eros is so completely mesmerizing. He looks so sad and so mournful, which is not what you expect of Eros from anything we know. He's the god of love, and he shoots the arrow through the heart of new lovers, and and yet here were lovers at the end of their journey. The Abba members had broken up their relationships and were breaking up their group as well. It was terribly, terribly sad. Um, then Ben has spent many, many hours, countless hours, scouring the, the back cover for looking at the details. And he was able to see the details of all these paintings on the walls. Uh, that's me there, <laughs> declaiming how wonderful it is. And the light, you can see there, it's so absolutely beautiful. Ben needed to stand in that, and then he wanted to capture me in it as well. And I, I really rather like that picture. It's kind of nice. Um, it's, it was just, we thought, we thought it was going to be the icing on the cake. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Go on. Obviously, what we needed to do, sorry, this one's coming in from this side. Uh, there it is. What we had forgotten was that we had to go to the museum next. But before we even got to that, it's all about 
<laughs> this was all about recreating the visitors album cover photo shoot I really 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 wanted to get this one for Ben in all four positions because it's so important to him and one for me in all four positions because I'm a narcissist and uh, <laughs> I don't think I am really but I'm starting to worry but what was great was uh, being able to be in that space, setting up the camera, as you can see here, and making sure everything was in place. You can see the book that we're holding. Actually, hang on a second, uh, get rid of that one. Um, bring in Agneta. Um You can see the book that she's holding is, uh, is, is, is actually, the books were there. There's a section of these leather bound sketch folders, which were all stacked up. They're all tightly, uh, tied shut and we didn't want to open them so in order to get the fact that we wanted to look like we were reading the same book that Agneta was uh, we picked up two and held them together I thought it was a rather nifty idea anyway thank you Agneta um, and back to where we were um, and going through with everything else trying to put everything in place you'll see that Frida was sitting in a chair um, we couldn't do that we found the chair it's at the other end of the room it's covered in a dust sheet and it's very fragile and can't be sat upon so we weren't going to move that um, and uh, and you'll see there that as well that Benny is he's got his arms on the back of the chair again we, so we, we, we've, we've made do we're standing in the right places and we had special permission to sit where, where Bjorn is sitting so that we wouldn't damage anything um, and well, let's, let's let's see. What do you reckon? Um, which way did that one come in? Anyway, that way. There you go. Um, we <laughs> I'll get better at this. So um, I'm going to get out of the way here because coming in this way is uh, the first one. Look at that. It's not bad, is it? I mean, we, we can change the light if we can play with it, but this is how it looks in its milky brilliance. Um, and then we've got this one coming in as well, uh, which is really, really lovely memories I will treasure for the rest of my life, genuinely. Then it was on to the museum. <laughs> Again, I'm so sorry I can't play the music on this because of course it's all copyrighted and I don't want to jeopardise uh, my, my good standing within the community by uh, inspiring a copyright claim. But look at me, it's terribly bad keying. This is the, the worst thing I've it's ever done, I think. Um, I had no idea what I was supposed to be going for. I had a lot of fun doing it. I was in a room all on my own with a camera. What's not to love? <laughs> now this one is Mamma Mia. Uh, I got a chance to dance with the ABBA avatars or the avatars. Um, these are cartoon generated members of ABBA. They weren't actually there, of course, because that would be exhausting for them, wouldn't it? I... I'm a beat behind all the dancing because I'd never seen what they were doing. I was trying to make it up as I went along. It was crazy, mad, and a lot of fun. I really did enjoy it a lot. Um, it's me and Abba and skipping about making a loon out of myself, isn't it? What's not to love? <laughs> it was worth it. Oh, I'm cringing, but it was a lot of fun. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the museum itself is is brilliant. Ben and I had been to it uh, when it toured the uh, when it toured the world and came to the UK. It was at Earl's Court. So about nine years ago, we found out. Um, but we had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, oh gosh, I've just realised there's something's falling apart on the top of that hat. Um, I need to sort that out later on before it unravels too quickly. Now that I've cut the string, oh, nightmare. String? I'm not even in it, Nathan. Yarn. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, we had uh, arranged to meet Caroline Fagerlind at the... Uh, Fagerlind? Fagerlind? Uh, Fagerlind, possibly. Caroline, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Caroline's the museum director, and uh, what a wonderful woman she turns out to be. Uh, we met her in the foyer after we'd gone round the museum, having had a wonderful time, as you can see. <clears throat> the museum's great. It's got. It's full of... Uh, it starts off with, a, there's a bit about Mamma Mia itself, because obviously Mamma Mia, the films, is, is become such a big part of the ABBA legend um, and has brought a whole new audience to ABBA. But the uh, the main bulk of it is the history. Sort of, it starts off with the, the, what the four members of ABBA were doing before they became the supergroup, during, and then it deals with what they've done since as well. It's really, really interesting. I think even if you are not... Um, I mean, if you hate the music of ABBA, 
then obviously you and I can't be friends. But if you hate the music of ABBA, then it's unlikely that you'll enjoy uh, a trip around the museum because it, it really, it, you are saturated with it. But it's, if you like them, even if you wouldn't call yourself necessarily a fan, I think there's plenty in it for you because it is fascinating. There's lots of this interactive stuff. There's other things as well, which I haven't shown here. Um, you can do karaoke, you can sing, it's like a sing star thing, it matches your uh, singing accuracy. It's, it's great fun. Um, Caroline uh, and I and Ben chatted probably for about an hour. <laughs> She's a busy lady and we had to sit up the day before obviously, but um, she was so nice and she was so interested in what we had to say. She wanted our feedback about the museum and about the hotel as well. And it was really, She's very knowledgeable. She's been, she worked um, with ABBA World, which was the name of the exhibition when it toured around. And so she's been with the ABBA family for a long time. And at one point she's, she said, and the last time I emailed Bjorn, I went, wait, <laughs> you cannot just casually say the last time I emailed Bjorn when you are standing next to two completely super fans, um, like it means nothing, that's everything. She said, well, I, he owns the business, he owns the building. So I have a reason to, to contact him. I said, like, ah. Now I'm pretty good at pushing other people forward. I like um, building people up and I like it when Sometimes people are too self-conscious to say things about themselves, but it's nice to be able to say things about someone on their behalf, something nice, obviously. And my husband, as I'm sure many of you are aware, is a composer, and I'm very, very proud of him. I like his work enormously. It's not just because he's my husband. I genuinely think his music is wonderful. Um, I often listen to it, uh, even when he's not around. And uh, he had brought with him just in case there was an opportunity to, to use it or pass it on to somebody, uh, a copy of his London Requiem CD. And I said to him, Ben, did you pack your London Requiem CD? The London Requiem, by the way, is a magnificent piece of work. It's available on iTunes, The London Requiem by Benjamin Till. And I, he immediately stepped behind Caroline and was going like, no, 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 <laughs> But I said, um, would you, Caroline, if we gave it to you, would you be able to pass it on to Björn? This is Björn Ulvaeus, of course, member of ABBA. And uh, I said, either either sort of post it to him, or if you get a chance to see him at some point, would you be able to hand it to him? And, and this is genuinely true. I, I said to her that he is responsible for giving us, Ben, so much music, it might be nice for him to get some back for Ben to give him some of his music in return as a thank you. And she said, absolutely, I will do that. And Ben was like, <sighs> now the, the CD was in our bags, the bags were behind the, the counter because we didn't want to carry them around the uh, museum and we'd already checked out the hotel. So she had to go off to another meeting and uh, she said, just leave it with the staff at the desk. They'll give it to me and I will make sure he gets it. So we hugged her and thanked her. This was amazing. Ben was a, <gasps> Bjorn's going to hear my music. Or he's at least going to be given it, whether he, we assume he would listen to it. Um, so we were, we were there, we got our bags back, Ben got the CD out, we borrowed some paper, and Ben was writing a note. While we were writing the note, <laughs> I'm shaking, my stomach just went into knots as I thought about telling you this next part of the story. My God. <laughs> While Ben was writing the note, Caroline re-emerged. She came back from her office. I don't, I literally, I don't know. She, I didn't see where she disappeared to, and I didn't see where she appeared from either. But she came back, and and she came over to Ben, and she said, "You will get a chance to give your CD to Bjorn in person. I've just emailed him, told him I've met two wonderful young men. He's not very far away." He's on his way to meet you. He'll be here in five minutes. Ah, uh, uh, I honestly, uh, uh, there are no words. <laughs> there are no words at all. I burst into tears and threw my arms around her neck. Uh, are you serious? And she said, yes, he's on his way here to do some recording in the studio in the basement. Um, and he wants to meet you. <laughs> she, 
She said, just wait here. He'll come through these doors and he'll come in and say hello. It has been a lifelong ambition of mine to meet ABBA. Um, for those of you in the UK who, uh, who grew up with Jim Will Fix It on the television, my Jim Will Fix It was to meet and sing with ABBA. I wrote to, to the programme asking for that for me as a 10 year old boy. I'm now 45 and I turned into a 10 year old boy immediately. Um, we were like, she disappeared, left us to it. We were like, what do we do? I'm glad I've marveled in my hair. And, uh, and then we turned around and through the doors, in walked one of my all time heroes, Bjorn Ulvaeus, and he threw out his arms and said, Benjamin and Nathan, hello. We were gibbering fools, I think, for the five minutes we were with him. Um, I got a chance to show him my ABBA tattoo. There it is. There's the back-to-back -back bees and the logo. Um, and Ben said to him, which one are you? And he said, you know, there's, he said, there's lots of theories about that. He said, but we never decided. We never, we never allocated which letter was which of us. Um, he said at one point there was a theory that um, the, the bees of the two men facing outwards would be facing their wives he said but that was somebody that was outside and that wasn't from us you heard it here first folks um ben gave him the cd he thanked him and uh said he would listen to it i mean i'm, I'm almost in tears thinking about it now it was the most extraordinary extraordinary thing um and then we had some photographs taken with <laughs> pure That, that's, that's not superimposed. That background is exactly where we happened to be standing with that behind. And uh, Bjorn was being uh, chaperoned by a staff member, I suppose, in case he got a little bit mobbed because it was, after all, the Abbey Museum. And, and he just, gosh, he, he was just so kind and so generous. And uh, we told him that we'd been going around recreating Abba photos. And I actually showed him the photo of the park bench, which I showed you guys earlier. And he thought it was marvellous. And he said, we've read this story, but he told it to us from his own mouth. He said, you know, no, nothing about that photograph shoot was planned. I've come back so you can see me. Um, nothing about that photo shoot was planned. He said, that, that newspaper that I'm reading, he said, I found that in the trash can. Uh, next, he said, we just, we just picked it up and started reading it. And, and the photograph was taken. Um, the story is as well, I don't know if this, this, we hear from another source that the hat that Anita is wearing um, was also just found lying around there. But we know for a fact that the newspaper was because Bjorn said it was. I then realised that because of going to the park bench and getting all of the, not the park bench, sorry, the, uh, the rain shelter and getting all of those, uh, getting all, of, all, all those pictures done, I had the single in my bag and it was right there and there was Bjorn and I said, would you mind signing this for me? I collect ABBA singles on vinyl. I've got over 400 there in those drawers there. Uh, I've got over 400 and this, and he signed it. Look at this. I have my own ABBA autograph. I'm almost welling up thinking about it. I just, what? What a day. We were in Stockholm for 36 hours. We then had to get on the tr on the plane. We were, we were late for our plane. We, did, we didn't even care. When we got to the airport, we were so um, overwhelmed. We were texting people and sending f photographs and attaching it to our wallpapers, my wallpaper on my phone. I will never forget this. So, Birgitta from Visit Stockholm, Steve from Visit Sweden, Caroline from Skansen and Caroline from the museum. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. You, oh, and Ted for making this happen in the first place. Ted, you wanted to cheer me up. My goodness, you did that. Ben and I will live with our memories of our Stockholm trip for a very, very long time. 
I didn't think this was episode, this is not even a podcast episode really. I didn't think it was going to be uh, quite such a long thing. I just wanted to share all those things with you and say to everybody, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of my journey ongoing. And uh, there will be a podcast episode coming your way very, very soon where I will show you the yarn. I have an email. Um, where I will show you the yarn that I bought while I was in Gamlestan in uh, Stockholm and uh, some more nitty lovely things. So stay posted and I will catch up with you very very soon. I'll leave you with a few choice photographs from my stay in Stockholm. Bye for now.